Hello everyone, my name is Mahmoud Abdurrahman. I am a PhD student of the National University of Singapore. Today I'm going to give a brief presentation about uh, our short paper, Build to VEC, the building representation in the vector space, which I co-authored with Dr. Adrian Chong and Dr. Clayton Miller. The motivation behind this paper is that in many building data science analytics applications, the spatial temporal attributes are not well represented. For example, when we try to predict the thermal comfort of a person in space, we usually just consider the personal and the environmental data. But rarely we do consider the location of the person in space. For example, is this, uh, is this person sitting near a window or uh, below a ceiling fan or below an air conditioning diffuser? Given the fact that spaces are heterogeneous and they are not well mixed zones. Also, in many cases, the location of sensors are constrained by the infrastructures. In the present paper, we extract the spatial and the temporal attributes of the building and convert them into a low dimensional space in which the building information is preserved. We do this in three main steps. Firstly, we extract the spatial data using building information models. We use industry foundation classes, IFC files, to extract the spatial objects such as walls, doors, windows, spaces, and so on, in addition to the relationship between these objects, also the properties of each object. Then we use Python and its library IFC Open Shell and Network X to convert the spatial data into attributed graphs. So what's an attributed graph? The attributed graph is one type of data structure that can handle much rich data in each edge and each node. So each edge can handle uh, one or more attributes and each node also can handle one or more attributes. Secondly, after extracting the spatial data, we added another layer of details for each space. By dividing each space into finite elements using spatial discretization methods, we can extract the fine location of people in spaces. From each, uh, we can do this in a form of graphs. And also, we can add more attributes to each cell node, such as the, the, the sky view factor or the biophilic view factor or the daylight eliminance and so on. Finally, the temporal data are collected using sensors which are deployed in the building as well as the user feedback from uh, the wearables or the smartwatches while the location of people in, in the building are captured using Bluetooth indoor localization system deployed in the building. This is a demo of a person moving in the building. First, his location is captured in real time using the indoor localization system and then this data is sent to a time series database then, while this person is moving, we can capture his proximity to different finite element cells as well as different spatial objects. This is an illustration of how it looks like when many people are moving into, uh, in the building and their data are converted into a temporal attributed graphs. After that, this temporal attributed graph is fed into a graph embedding algorithm, which converts it into an embedding matrix. The embedding matrix is a low dimensional matrix where the spatial and temporal data of the building is preserved. We use two main algorithms. The first one is called Spatial Temporal Attentive Recurrent Neural Network, or in short, it could be called STAR. And the second one is called NU2VEC. The first one is used for dynamic building data, while the second one is used for static building data. This work is just a preliminary step towards the, uh, the conversion of spatial temporal da building data into the vector space. We can identify a number of possible applications, such as for the classification problems, we, we can classify occupants uh, indoor environmental satisfaction. Also, we can uh, classify space, use, space utilization. Also, the space recommendations or sub-recommendations is uh, injured. For the regression, we, we can use this application in the model predictive control. For clustering, we can use this application also for spaces or zones or building clustering 
as well as for building energy benchmarking. This application also is very promising for generative models. We can use it for uh, automatic building information model generation. Thank you so much for paying attention and stay healthy and stay safe.